Benafi, bananas and toffee. Benafi. I just found that out now, and uh, it's good to know that. Today, I'm gonna to be making a banafi pie. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it, because I just found out what it was just earlier. So we can figure this out together. I'm gonna to make it and eat it for the very first time. And uh, well, I just didn't wanna make any old banafi pie recipe. I wanted to stick with the original OG recipe. This one's coming from 1971 East Sussex, England, uh, a, a gastro pub called the Hungry Monk. Shortbread pie crust with dolce de leche and sliced bananas and lashings of whipped cream. And I bet you always wanted to know what Margaret Thatcher's favorite dessert was. The ladies not for turning. So I got to start off with making dolce de leche. I got to get that right out of the way because it takes a little while to do it. And I've just recently made dolce de leche, but I, but I, 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 so I'm going to be straight up honest with you and say that I have no idea when this is done. But I did it in like a very difficult way, which this did not turn out. And I took a very challenging approach at it. I've passed everything through a sieve. I've had it in the fridge. I've mixed it together. Some of it, I've blended it together. This is what I have. If it doesn't turn out at this point, then I give up. And I wouldn't wish that on anyone. So I'm going to do a much easier way of making Dolce de Leche today. What I'm gonna do is take these two cans of ordinary, everyday, sweetened condensed milk. I'm gonna put them into my pot full of water, submerge them completely. Once the water's been brought to a boil, I'm gonna add the cap into a preheated oven, 285 degrees Fahrenheit for three and a half hours. So in the bowl, I'm gonna combine nine ounces, 255 grams of flour, one ounce, 28-ish grams of icing sugar, cubed butter, so it's like cubed up like that, four and a half ounces, 127 grams of cold butter. Mix the butter and the flour together until it resembles fine breadcrumbs. You gotta use your fingertips to keep like the butter as cool as possible, right? Uh, I think it looks good, so I'm gonna add in an egg. The whole egg, one egg, and one egg yolk. Oh, so one egg plus one egg yolk. Work the egg into the dough to form a paste. Okay, that's very pasty. Cover it. I don't wanna waste the plastic wrap, come on. Also gonna cover it with a kitchen towel. So it's gonna be double covered. In the fridge for half an hour. Because I don't want to wait all day for the dolce de leche, it's hogging the oven, man. It's supposed to take three and a half hours. It's only like less than halfway. I'm going to finish the dolce de leche on a simmer on the stove. And that way the oven is open for business when it comes to everything else, like pie crusts and stuff. Of course, you can just plan this all in advance and do this like the night before, but I didn't. I wanted to do it today. After half an hour, the dough is ready to go. I have a loose bottom tart tin. Um, I just have these things, it's great, because I can use it for times like this. Very liberally grease this tart pan up. So once I've buttered the tart tin, and then I'm supposed to line with the pastry thinly rolled out. The recipe does not have a lot to say, so you kind of have to uh, rely on some of your intuition which is taking my dough. I'm just supposed to roll this out until I see fit. So I'm gonna roll it out so that it fits into this. Like a quarter of an inch thick or something. Like maybe less, maybe more. One, two, three. It really says jack shit in this recipe about doing anything. I'm really just kind of making it up as I go. Uh, prick the base all over with a fork. I mean, I'm making a pie, it's not rocket science. So I'm just adding a little extra dough around the edges because I've made pie crusts in the past that uh, the edges, they shrunk down, just shrunk down and shrinkage. I don't like that. So I'm just making sure that there's gonna be enough. Get add the greased up tin foil on the very top and then a pie weight, which I'm using a saucepan. But the thing with the saucepan, is that there's a little extra room right here. It's not a perfect fit. I'm gonna add some rice around that open edge. 
Not that much. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. So that will act like a little weight around the sides so that there's no shrinkage. Careful, you bastard. So I'm gonna bake that initially for 15 minutes, like with the rice and the saucepan on and blah, 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 blah. I didn't really think how I was gonna get this out of the oven, but I found a way. After 15 minutes, I'm gonna remove this and this. Oh, f now there's a bit of a thin area here on the pie crust. And there's these little holes here in the Slight issue. Slight. So I don't know where I lost you there, but uh, when I was baking this thing initially, I didn't have a tin, like a pan underneath of this pie tin, so parts of the pie crust and butter and stuff was falling to the bottom of the oven and just like crisping up and burning and smoking. So when I took this out for the first time, the smoke alarm was going off like I've never heard before. And I raced over there, I had a towel in front of it, trying to wave it out. Fan was on here, All, every window is open, but the, it was just so much smoke. The alarm was just piercing and uh, the entire building and the block and, the city, they all know I'm making this pie crust right now. So uh, if you heard it, that was me. Anyway, what happened was, what happened was that this pie weight here was weighing too heavily on one side of this crust here. And it just kind of created this very thin area with like a bunch of holes in it and whatnot. So I took some extra pie crust and just kind of patched it up a bit as best as I could. And then I took this rice pie weight with the tin foil and I had it covering everything so it wouldn't burn everything, but also like weighing more on this side, but like focused on, on the problem area. So I had that baking for like five to eight minutes or something until it looked like it was like connected and part of this other pie crust, which it kind of does. And then I removed all the pie weights and put this back in the oven until it was all nice and golden brown. So. Uh, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So I took some of the leftover pie dough. I had some leftover apricot jam from a couple of videos ago. You know, put them together, you got yourself an apricot turnover. So that's what I did with the leftover dough. And it's damn good. Three and a half hours later. Grab some tongs, we're going fishing. Sweet condensed milk is now should be Dolce de Leche. I'm gonna let these cool completely. Cool to touch. Okay, so this is very, very thick. It's good stuff. If you know my history, then you know I'm happy with it. So in a bowl, I am going to add in a cup and a half 350-ish milliliters of heavy cream, tablespoon of sugar, and, uh, and a teaspoon of instant coffee. So whip up until thick and smooth. There's the whipped cream that's gonna go on top, and I, I, I really didn't want to over mix this. So as soon as it started coming together, I was like, okay, that's good enough for me. Six bananas. And I'm just gonna slice them up, you know, the classic way of slicing up a banana. All right, so I need to put this all together. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the pie crust. La, and I'm gonna spread over the toffee. Offset spatula. Oh, this is thick stuff. So spread the dulce de leche or toffee or whatever. So I'm supposed to be using a can and a half of this stuff. Just pile it on. On top of this, I'm gonna add the sliced bananas. I should probably look at what a photo of this is supposed to look like instead of doing it blind. So just go for it. Slice bananas on top of the dulce de leche. I have more than enough bananas to go around. Stacked to the teeth. Spoon the cream onto the bananas, just any particular way. Up to the edge of the pastry, okay. You're gonna exceed the pastry, go for it, who cares? Freshly ground coffee as a garnish. Oh. Sprinkle on top some freshly grounded coffee. Oh, take it easy, man, take it easy, that does a lot. 
and then slice bananas on the very top. Just do a nice little pretty pattern. That's all we're asking. Okay, I gotta get the pie out of the pie shop. Okay, okay. That about does it. Order up. Just a little bit more, wouldn't hurt. This pie crust is perfect and everything that's going on inside and on top of that pie crust, oh my God. You know, I don't think you really need to go horsing around with many Banoffee pie recipes because the one you wanna use is the one from 1971. It's all you need right here. This thing is beautiful. That's all the time we'll share today. I'll see you next time. Banoffee.